Praise the Lord. I welcome you to our revival time, revival session, revival for your soul, revival in your body, revival in your family, and revival to everyone around you. Pay attention and give the Lord this quality time so that something of power, God's power, will come to your life. You'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We know you are creator. We know you are redeemer. We know you are healer. And we know you are the energizer. And you are the one to quicken everyone, even this moment in Jesus' name. And I pray that your word of promise, your word of power will penetrate every life and will penetrate the whole family, will penetrate everyone so that, Lord, something great and good and wonderful and marvelous and wonders will come into every life, even this very moment in Jesus' name. Be glorified, O Lord, in every life. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. God bless you. Please pay attention. Don't do any other thing at this time. Just concentrate on the word coming to you. And something great and marvelous will happen in your life. I'm reading to you from Exodus chapter 15. And we're reading one verse there, verse 26. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, listen to this, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that he lets thee. That's the word the Lord is bringing to you today. And I want you to underline those four words there, none of these diseases. None of these diseases. That's what the Lord is bringing to you. That's what the Lord is emphasizing in your heart. And it says, all the diseases of Egypt, that all those children of Israel had known, none of them, none of them, not one percent, not a fraction, not a little part, will come upon the children of Israel. And the word is still the same today because God says, I am God, I change not. He's still the same covenant keeper. He's still the same healer. He's still the same power that comes in every life. His power has not changed. His authority has not changed. His love has not changed. His mercy has not changed. I am the Lord that he lets you. And because he is, he says, I am. I am that I am. It's not going to change. It's not going to alter his word. Everything coming to you today will bring a great performance, a wonderful performance, signs and wonders in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Look at this. None of these diseases. That's what we are talking about today. That's what you are receiving today. That's the word the Lord has for you today. None of these diseases. Let me read that part again in verse 26. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which are brought upon the Egyptians. Why? Because for since I am the Lord that healeth thee. Once again, the topic is none of these diseases. Three things we're looking at as we look at that verse. Number one, God's covenant of healing. God's covenant of healing. It's a covenant. It's a decree. It's a declaration. It's something that God himself has announced. And it is for you. It's for me. It's for everyone. God's covenant of healing. Number two now, God's condition for our health. Not only that he heals us, he keeps us healthy. And you are going to discover he's going to keep you healthy. Whatever challenge you have, whatever you might hear, is happening here and there. The Lord has promised if you are sick, he is the Lord who heals you. 
And if you are well, he'll keep you well. He'll keep you strong. God's condition for our health. Point number three is God's companionship as our healer. He never leaves us alone. He never leaves us alone. Anywhere you are, the Lord is there. And he's there as a healer. Is there as a protector. Is there as the one to make you fulfill the reason he brought you into this world. God's companionship as our healer. Let's come back to number one. It's God's covenant of healing. God's covenant of healing. You understand the covenant? A covenant is an agreement between two parties between two individuals it's like in the marriage covenant the man and the woman they've been apart but the time comes they come together and the minister asks them do you take this woman as your lawful wife are you going to be with her until that's your part for the rest of your life and he says yes i do a covenant is made do you take this woman as your wife the lawful woman in your life and the only woman in your life, you'll feed her, you'll take care of her, you'll protect her, you'll shelter her, you'll do everything she needs, and you say, yes, I will. And because of that answer, I will. A covenant is made. The Lord is saying to the children of Israel, and the Lord is saying to you, I have a covenant with you. I brought you out of the land of captivity. I brought you out of the land of bondage. I brought you out of the land of darkness. And I have a covenant with you. The covenant is, I take you as, as mine. And I take you as my son. I take you as my daughter. I take you, listen to this word, as my heritage. And I will feed you. I will take care of you. I will protect you. I will preserve you. I will fulfill a divine purpose in your life. And if you are sick, if you have any attack, if you have any oppression, if you have anything that bothers you, I am there for you all the time. The Lord is there for you tonight. And the Lord is there for you every time. And the Lord is there for you. Whatever may be happening, there is a covenant between you as a child of God and the Almighty God, your Heavenly Father. Number one, God's covenant of healing. Look at that covenant again. In a covenant, in an agreement that is written down and it is sealed before the law. And it is sealed before the people who are lawmakers. It means that every detail of the agreement, the condition there, the promises there, and the proclamation there, everything is fulfilled. Look at it now. It says, and say, this is not an angel talking. This is not even Moses talking. This is the Almighty God talking to the children of Israel. And this is the Almighty God talking to you. And he said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, here is the promise in the covenant. Here is the provision in the covenant. Here is the proclamation in the covenant what he brings to you it says i will put none of these diseases upon thee can i tell you something can i remind you of course you know this that god never changes his mind he makes a promise and he doesn't change his mind he tells you this is what i'm going to do and he never changes his mind he might have told you five years ago ten years ago thirty years ago and today he says i am god i change not what i told you at that time i'm still telling you today he says i will put none of these diseases upon thee which are brought upon the egyptians he says i set you apart I sever you, I separate you from the Egyptians, and whatever you see on the Egyptians that comes upon them will not come upon you. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord, because I am the Lord, sees, I am the Lord, and I have a covenant with you. I am the Lord that 
he lets you. And look at that again in Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7, it's wonderful to know that uh, when God makes a promise and when God makes a covenant, he repeats it over and over. He wants you to be sure beyond any shadow of doubt, the wind may blow, the sea may roar, and Satan may even roar, and everything may look like uh, things on the negative side, but the covenant he has made will stand firm. Come now to Deuteronomy chapter 7. And I'm reading from verse 12. Wherefore it shall come to pass if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them that the Lord thy God. God shall keep unto thee, the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which is swear unto thy fathers. Children, there you understand uh, the covenant he made with your parents, the covenant he made with the whole family. It's standing. It's standing. And you are a beneficiary of that. And you see in that verse 12, God calls it a covenant. It's not just a statement. Anybody can make statement. It's not just a declaration. This one is a covenant. It's like a decree. God has said it, and it is settled, and I believe it. Look at it now as it goes on telling them the provision in the covenant, the promise in the covenant, the privilege you have in the covenant. He goes on, verse 13, verse 14, and now verse 15, and the Lord will take away from thee all sickness. You may want to underline that in your Bible, and always remember that. Remember, it's a covenant. It's a covenant, and I want to remind you once again, it's like the covenant you made between yourself and your wife, yourself, and your husband, and you said, I will, I will, I will, I will take care of her. How many years have come and gone now? Five years gone, ten years gone, thirty years gone. The covenant you made is still standing. All this period that God himself had made a covenant, the covenant is still standing. And he says in verse 15, the Lord will take away from thee all sickness. All sickness here is not even going beyond that of Egypt. All sickness, all sickness of Egypt, all sickness from Assyria, all sickness from Babylon, all sickness from wherever, anywhere you hear, there's something then there's something you've read it, you've heard it, that a sickness is coming from a particular place. It says, no matter where it's coming from, it will take away from you all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt in particular, which thou knowest upon thee, but it will lay them upon all them that hate thee. It says, it is not for you. It is not for me. You have a testimony. I said it is not for you. Look at the testimony you have. The psalmist lived hundreds of years after Moses, after the covenant had been made. And the, and the psalmist said, you know what I discovered? I discovered that the covenant is still relevant in my own time. And it is still working in my own life. The same thing we can say, Calvary. The same thing we can say, Calvary has given us a covenant. And Jesus Christ died. And Jesus Christ shed his blood. And Jesus was at the weeping post. And he had been beaten for you. He had been smitten for you. He had been slain for you. And because of that, God has a covenant with you. God has a covenant with everyone that will believe on him today and even though 22,000 years have passed since that covenant at Calvary and since that provision at Calvary, it is still standing today. Look at what David said in Psalm 103. Psalm 103 he said, I'm enjoying the benefits of the covenant. It's still standing and you are still enjoying the benefits of the covenant, even today, I'm coming to Psalm 103, verse 1. It says, Bless the Lord, 
O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You know, there are people that only know of one benefit is I'm saved, I'm saved, praise the Lord. My sins are forgiven, I'm saved, my soul is renewed. That's one benefit, the benefit of salvation, the benefit of being born again. But you know what the psalmist said? He said, forget not all his benefits. There is a healing in the benefits, and there is deliverance in the benefits. There's joy in the benefits. There's provision in the benefits. Forget not all his benefits. Look at verse 3. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. If, uh, you know, I were with you in the house right there, I'd be telling you personal lies that I would say, you forgiveth all mine iniquities. You see, there are people that uh, think that God forgives sin, but he forgives us in a stingy way. He forgives us little by little. He doesn't forgive everything all at the same time. They go, now forgive me, Lord. I have done what I shouldn't have done. I have not done what I should have done. Forgive me. And then they come back the following week again. Oh Lord, forgive me. They come back again. Forgive me. Some people are even worse than that. Every time they have their quiet time, every time they have devotional time, every time they pray to the Lord, they start with forgive me, forgive me. But you know, he said, he forgave all your iniquities. When he forgives you, everything is forgotten. He puts your sin in the sea of God's forgetfulness and they will never be remembered against you anymore in Jesus name your sins are gone your sins are gone let me show you look at verse 12 verse 12 of that same Psalm 103 as far as the east is from the west so far as he removed our transgressions from us as far as the east is from the west, he has removed all our transgressions away from us. Come back to verse 3 of that psalm, who healeth all thy diseases. You know, there are people that say or they think, tell me, pastor, can somebody ever live without even any sickness, any headache? Any breathing problem? Can somebody live totally free without any stomach ache? Can somebody live without a debilitating disease that will eventually take his life? Are we not to just, uh, you know, tolerate whatever is there and just thank God we are not as sick as other people? Other people are more sick. Other people are, you know, more depressed. No, it says everything that is called sickness, everything that is called disease, everything that is called infirmity, he'll take out of your life. You must be happy about that. And that's what David, David said, I have a lot to do. And I have a lot of battles to fight. And I have a lot of victories to win. And I do not have any luxury of entertaining, of hiding, of having any disease in my body. And praise the Lord. The covenant of the Lord has covered that for you. The covenant of the Lord has covered that. You don't have any room for any sickness. You don't have any room for any pain. You don't have any room for any disease that you'll say, I'll manage that. I cannot manage any disease. I will not manage any disease. As for me and for you. As for me, it is for you. As for you, it is for me. It is for every one of us. And it says, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Look at verse 4 here. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things. You can say amen there because of that. He satisfies, he satisfies, he saturates, he satisfies your mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed 
like the eagles. I'm sure you understand that. He says, you'll not be weak, you'll not be firm, you'll not be, you know, bound, bound by anything, and you'll not be downtrodden. He says, it renew your youth. That is, you are getting older, but then it touches your spine, it touches your backbone, it touches your blood system, it touches every part of you. That's the covenant, that's the covenant, and it says, it will renew your youth like that of the ego. Uh, look at uh, Psalm 89. This is very important. Psalm 89. I'm reading from verse 34. Psalm 89, verse 34. It says, My covenant will I not break. Anything may happen, my covenant will I not break. A generation may come after another generation, my covenant will I not break. Some things may be happening that people don't understand. Some things may be happening that you say, How about this? How about this where is this coming from it says leave all that alone concentrate on my covenant which i've given unto you my covenant will i not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my leaves do you remember what has gone out of his leaves i will put none of these diseases upon thee which are brought upon the egyptians for i am the lord that healeth thee it says I will not change that. I will not change that. I will not remove that from you. Uh, let me show you something in the New Testament now. We're looking at uh, Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 6. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6. It says, But now, as you obtained a more excellent ministry, we're coming to the bright light of the gospel. We're coming to the bright dispensation of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're coming to the bright side of Calvary. Now the wilderness is over. The children of Israel have settled in the land of Canaan. The time and the period of the kings and the prophets have all come and gone. And now we come to the time of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it tells us something. It tells us something about the Lord Jesus Christ. And it about the covenant that has now made it says, but now he has obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. He is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. You see the children of Israel in the wilderness, manna came every day without fail, without any vacation that, you know, we went out today, there's no manna. Manna was available every time for them. And the Lord is, seen, is, giving, is giving us now a better covenant. And you understand, the children of Israel, when there was no water to drink, even the dry rock brought out water. And God is saying, I have a better covenant with you. When you didn't have any food to eat, manna came from heaven, and the water came out of the rock, and he said, I could even have fed them with honey out of the rock. And the Lord is saying, Christ has now come. A new covenant has now come. And the covenant, the new covenant is as good. Not just as good, it's even better than the old covenant. Because now there are better promises there's a better provision, and there's a better, there's a better performance, and there's a better way he answers prayer now. The, the moment you mention the name of Jesus, it is done. Hey, look at this, in this better covenant. Look at what God has provided in the better covenant. And it's for you. It's for you. This is not, you know, just talking and just uh, preaching uh, and just reading the Bible. This is for you. When the children of Israel heard that water was coming out of the rock, they knew it was for them. It was for everyone. When they knew that manna was falling, they knew it was for them. It's for everyone. And as we're here now of the covenant and God's covenant of healing, this is for you. This is for you. I can see the healing virtue of the Lord Jesus Christ passing through into your body right now. Every weakness gone, every sickness gone. And by stripes, you are healed even this very moment in Jesus' name. Look at First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. 
I'm reading from verse 24. Who is own self, I love that. Who is own self, bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Look at that. His own self, bear all your sins in his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sin. You understand that? Dead to sin. Sin may be there, but you are dead to it. And sin is dead to you. And there's no relationship between you and the sins. And then he says that we should live unto righteousness. Then he says, by whose stripes ye were healed. By, who, by whose stripes ye were healed. When the covenant was made, everything was counted as done. Let me come back again to the marriage covenant. That, you know, the man and the woman, they just said on either side, on both sides, I will. And then they have not got home, but the woman knows that there's shelter. They have not got home, but the woman knows there's protection. They have not got home, but the woman knows there's food to eat. Because of that covenant, the same thing, the Lord has a covenant with you. And it says, by whose stripes you were healed, it is done in Jesus' name. I almost want to hear your amen over here. Shout teach in the corner of your room over there. I said you are healed in Jesus' name. Look at what Jesus did before. And look at what Jesus is still doing today. As God said, I'm God, I change not. The same thing, Jesus our Savior, Jesus our Redeemer, is saying, I'm your Messiah. I will not change. I'm your healer. I'll not change. I'm your protector. I will not change. Look at what he did before. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verse 38. Uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verse 38. I know that verse all the same. Open your Bible. You see, there's something uh, that happens to you when you read and you hear. At the same time, Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Uh, do you see the Holy Trinity there? How God, God the Father, anointed Jesus, God the Son, or the Holy Ghost, God the Holy Ghost, with what power, with the Holy Ghost and what power, who went about, I can see him get into your house there. I can see him get into your fellowship there. I can see him get into the congregation there because it says he went about doing good and healing all. How many? Tell me. All, I said how many you see healing all, and he has not changed. It remains the same today, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Before I leave that uh, point one, let me come to Hebrews, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 8. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ, mention that name, let him hear. Jesus Christ, let heaven hear. There's power in that name. There's healing in that name. There's protection in that name. Redemption in that name. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Understand that. Believe that. Have that in your heart. Have that in your mind. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. What's the consequence of that? What am I going to do because of that? What am I going to say because of that? Look at verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Let your conversation be without anxiety. Let your conversation now be without any fear. Let your conversation now be without any panic. It says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with those things, such things as ye have, as ye have. You have something now. For he has said, look at this, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. The Lord is my healer. The Lord is my security. The Lord is my protector. Remember from verse 8, is Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever? Now I can boldly say, the Lord is my supplier, and the Lord is the giver. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Fear is gone. Panic is gone. And anxiety is gone. Why? Number one, God's 
covenant of healing. We're coming back to Exodus chapter 15. And I'm reading from verse 26. Exodus chapter 15. We're looking at verse 26. Point number two. God's condition for our health. God's condition for our health. I didn't know there's any condition. I thought it's automatic. In a way, yes. But you know you have to do something. Look at manna coming down for the children of Israel. What's the condition of finding the manna? You need to go out of where you are. And you need to go to where the manna is and collect and gather your own portion. There's a portion waiting for you. But there's a condition get to the place and get your own. I see water coming out of the rock. What's the condition? I must have a container and I must uh, take uh, my own part that the water is coming out. Doesn't mean that everybody now has taken his part. You must fulfill the condition. Look at chapter 15 of Exodus verse 26 and look at the word if. Look at the word if. If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. What's that saying? You see, there are people that listen to the word of God, but they don't listen like a patient listens to the word of a doctor. The doctor says, give me all your attention. And before he even tells you to give all the attention, you are all ears and every word dropping out of his mouth, you are gathering together, do this, take this, and take this with meal, and take this with, you know, breakfast or whatever. You hack into that word, and you do it exactly as he has said. You are not a doctor, perhaps. You are not, a, you know, a medical person. And so you don't add your own. You don't say, he said, take it this way. I'm going to add my own idea. I'm going to add my own opinion. You don't do that. What do you do? You're hacking diligently. That's what the Lord is saying. He says, if you will diligently hack into the voice of the Lord your God and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of those diseases upon you which are brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. You must listen to that also. He said, I will not listen to that. Believe that, accept that, embrace that, hold that in your mind. And then he says, I am the Lord. He didn't say I was. He didn't say I will be. He says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Always, always, always make sure you listen to the terms of the covenant. You listen to the condition of the covenant and do as he has said. Come to Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23, and I'm reading here from verse 22. Exodus chapter 23, verse 22. It says, But if thou shalt will indeed obey his voice. You see that? It still has the word if there. And it says, If thou wilt obey his voice. You say, That's my problem. No, it's not a problem. You, have you, you've been in school before, and uh, you know, our children still go to school, and they're going to take an exam. And as they sit at the exam hall, the, um, the invigilator says, Now, students, pay attention and look at all the conditions we're making. Read your question paper very well. Uh, somebody said, I cannot obey. Of course you can. And then see how many are you to answer, how many questions, and which of the questions there are compulsory. You must answer number one and number three, and then after that you can choose uh, any other four or five. You obey that. It is in that obedience that we're going to have success. Thank God success is coming your way. Thank God um, healing is coming your way and the healing covenant will be profitable in your life. In Jesus' name, look at that verse 22. And if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, 
all that I speak, the Lord was sending a messenger to them. And he had given the messenger what he would say. And then he says, if you will listen to that and obey and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. What will then happen? Verse 25. And you shall serve the Lord your God. You serve the Lord. You obey his word. You do the evangelism. And you do what he's calling you to do. And he shall bless thy bread. And he shall bless thy water. And I will take, look at that. There's no doubt about this. It's not, maybe I will, maybe I will not. He says, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee, from inside you, in your bone, from inside you, in your veins, from inside you, in all the parts of your body. I will take sickness away from the midst of you. Verse 26, I love this. And this ought to be your expectation. And this ought to be your resting place that you know. This is mine. Look at it. Verse 26. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. Somebody help me shout amen over there. Amen. The number of thy days I will fulfill. Remember I said I will. I will. I will. Pandemic will not cut short your life. Disease will not cut short your life. And all the things that are, that are happening, and the winds blowing, and the sea roaring, and the devil roaming about seeking whom he may devour, will not cut short your life in Jesus' name. Come to Isaiah. Chapter 57, Isaiah. Chapter 57. And I'm reading here from verse 18. Isaiah chapter 57. We're reading from verse 18. Verse 18 says, I have seen his ways. God is watching you. And God is looking at your ways. Like you listen to the word of God. You believe the word of God. You embrace the word of God. You say, praise the Lord. I now know afresh. I know that I know that this is mine. I'm going to lean on God. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to embrace the promise of God. God says, I've seen that good attitude. I've seen that faith. I've seen that affection for the word of God. I've seen that honor, that respect you have for me and my word. I have seen his ways and I will heal him. Because I've seen his ways, he has fulfilled the condition. He has listened to me. He has taken my word serious. And because of that, I will heal him. I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him. Comfort will come to you. All the panic in the heart, all the fear in the heart, all the apprehension in the heart, the Lord will take everything away, and then I will even give comfort to his mourners. It says in verse 19, I create the fruit of the leaves. Peace, peace to him that is so far off. You are far away from where I am here, but you are hearing the word, peace be unto you. Purity in your life, power in your life, protection in your life, total cure, total deliverance for you in Jesus' name. And then he says unto him that is near, says the Lord, listen to this, maybe you can even read it with me, the last line of that verse 19, and I will heal him. Can you repeat that? And I will heal him. Say that as if you know that is coming to you directly. One, two, three, go. And I will heal him. He will do it. He has done it already. And I believe that something great is happening already. Look at Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. I'm reading from verse 4. It says, surely, there's no doubt about this. It says, surely, he has uh, born our griefs. The condition is, it's done it already. 
and you need to accept, you need to believe, you need to trust. It's done it already. And carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But look at this, look at this, verse 5. But he was wounded, he was wounded. Why? For our transgressions. And he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, this is mine. And with his stripes, this is yours. And with his stripes, this is for the whole family. And with his stripes, we are healed. You are healed in Jesus' name. It is done. It is confirmed in Jesus' name. I'm reading from uh, John chapter 5. John chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse 14. John chapter 5, verse 14. Here is what he has done. And he's now telling us the condition of keeping the blessing. The condition of keeping the healing. The condition of keeping the deliverance. It tells a man whom he had healed and delivered and set free from 38 years of sickness. It tells him, as it tells you and tells me in John chapter 5 verse 14. Afterwards, Jesus findeth him in the temple. And said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Can I tell you what Jesus is telling you? Behold, thou art made whole. Say amen. Behold, thou art made whole. Say thank you, Lord. Behold, thou art made whole. And now he says, See no more, lest it was seen come unto thee. You'll not put your hand in the fire again. You put your hand in the fire and the past it burnt you. And you jumped, you did a kind of uh, you know, dangerous thing and jumped into a pit and you hurt yourself. And it says, now I've healed you and now I've mended your life and now I've taken away all the pains and all the sicknesses. It says, don't do that again. Make sure you keep on believing the Lord. And as your soul prospers, your body will also remain in health. And your work, the work of your hand, will also be prospered in Jesus' name. Hey, let me read this to you before I leave that point. Hey, so John chapter 3 verse 2. So John chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 2. It says, Beloved, you are, not, you are beloved of God. Now you are a child of God. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things. I pray above all things. I desire above all things. I affirm in your life above all things. I confirm in your life, in your family above all things. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. A good amen. And be in health, another amen, even as thy soul prospereth. Even as thy soul prospereth. Point number one is God's covenant of healing. Point number two is God's condition for our health. Point number three, God's companionship as our healer. I'm coming back to Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 26, Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, and said, if thou wilt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Have you noticed those two words there? Thou, that's you. Thy God, your God. It's saying, whatever other people do, wherever other people go, whatever may be the reaction or the attitude of other people, you determine how you relate with God. And it says, if thou, it is not a community thing, it's not a kind of, a for the populace, it's you as an individual. You, you single out yourself. And it says, if thou wilt diligently, 
hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear this personal to, the, to his commandments and keep this is personal and keep all his statutes. Look at this. I will put none of these diseases upon you which have brought upon the Egyptians for I am the Lord that he lets thee. I am. It is something interesting as I look at the word of God. The companionship of the Lord is with you. Number one, God is with you. Number two, God is before you. Number three, God is within you. Number four, God is all around you. Number five, God is above you. Number six, God is even coming behind you. And number seven, underneath you are the everlasting arms of God. Look at that. It says, I am so near and I am with you. And I am with you and I'm in you and I'm around you. I'm on your left. I'm on your right. I am before you, in front of you. I am behind you. Even underneath you, I am carrying you. And I stand with you. And I stay with you. And I abide with you as your healer. And let's look at this. Number one, God with us. Number one, God with us. Matthew chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 21. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth his son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Verse 22, now all this was done that it may be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord, uh, by, uh, of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be a child, and shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. His name is Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. God with us. God with you. God is with you there. The healer is with you there. I wish I can get to so and so, so that I can be healed. The healer is right there with you. Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. That's the healer. That's the deliverer. That's the Redeemer. That's the one that sets you free. And he says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I am the Lord your healer. I will strengthen you. Yea, I will help you. Yea, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. The Lord is with you. Number two is going before you. Is going before you. Everywhere you go, you'll not get into darkness. You'll not get into disease. You'll not get into attack. You'll not get into affliction. You know why? God goes before you. And he clears the way before you even get there. Isaiah chapter 45. I'm reading from verse 2. He is with you. And he is before you, is going before you. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 2. I will go before thee. That's it. That's it. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Every hindrance, he'll take away. Every predicament, he'll take away. Why? Because he's going before you. Going before us. Number three, is great within us. Is great within us. In First John chapter 4. First John chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 4. First John chapter 4. Reading from verse 4. Ye of godly children. 
and have overcome them. Ye of God, little children, and have overcome them because, look at this, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Look at that. The healer, he says, I am as close as if I were inside you living inside you, operating inside you, abiding inside you. Is God with us? Is going before us? Is great within us? Is governing around us? Is governing around us? Is around us? Satan will not be around you. Evil spirit will not be around you. Demons will not be around you because already God is standing in place. And because God is already around you, evil will not come around you in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 125. It's governing all around you. He governs everything around you. That no evil will come and change his plan and change his purpose and change the progress that he has ordained for you. Psalm 125, I'm reading from verse 2. As the mountains are around about Jerusalem, as the mountains are around about Jerusalem, can I explain that to you? Jerusalem is so situated that you had mountains all around. And in those days, those mountains catch the enemy, the armies away from Jerusalem. Whenever the children of Israel in Jerusalem were bidden to the watch of the Lord. And the Lord is saying, as the mountains are round about Jerusalem, look at this, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever until today until this day the lord is around his people even forever what's the result of that what's the consequence of that look at verse 3 for the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lord of the righteous the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon you the plague of the wicked shall not rest upon you. The wickedness of the wicked shall not rest upon you. It says, for the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Number one, God with us. Number two, God going before us. Number three, God great within us. Number four, God governing around us. Number five, God glorious above us. Glorious above us. It doesn't leave any empty, vacant place where the enemy can come and, and, and torment you. Where the enemy can come and destroy you. Is above you, is beneath you, is before you, and uh, is behind you, is on your right, is on your left, is around you, is everywhere present. You are secured, you are saved, you are healed, you are delivered in Jesus' name. I'm reading from Genesis chapter 28. Genesis chapter 28, and we're reading from verse 14. Let's, let's back up to verse 13. Genesis chapter 28, verse 13. It says, And behold, the Lord stood above it. Jacob was there, and the ladder came, and the ladder was from earth to heaven. And it says, And the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. Did you hear that? 
you will spread. Your prosperity will spread. Your influence will spread. Your family will spread to the west, to the east, to the north, to the south. And in this and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Look at verse 15. Behold, I am with thee. Behold, I go before thee. Behold, I come governing behind thee. Behold, I am around thee. I am with thee and will keep thee in all the places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee. I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Everything you have heard, everything the Lord has said unto you, He will fulfill. He will not leave you until everything is done. It will be done in your life in Jesus' name. God is glorious above us. And God is guarding behind us. He's guarding behind us. I'm looking at Exodus chapter 14, Exodus chapter 14, and here we're reading from verse 19, Exodus chapter 14, reading from verse 19, it says, and the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, he was before them, going ahead of them, showing the way, mapping out the path. Now he goes behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between them, between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. Why does he go behind you? Because if the enemies are coming from behind, he stands between you and the enemies behind. They will never catch up with you. Enemies will never catch up with you. Disease will never catch up with you. Pandemic will never catch up with you. Evil will never catch up with you. And it was a cloud and darkness to them. But it gave light by night to these, that is, to the children of Israel, so that the one came not near the other all the night. Those evil things will never come near you in Jesus' name. And now God is good and glorified underneath us. He goes before us. He goes behind us. He's all around us. It's on the left and on the right. It's above and everywhere. Now, underneath us, underneath you, at the everlasting arms. You're secured. My brother, I said, you're secured. Sister, you're secured. Son, daughter, you're secured in Jesus' name. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 33. Deuteronomy chapter 33. We're reading here from verse 25. Deuteronomy chapter 33. We're reading from verse 25. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. I lost your amen. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. Amen. And as thy days, so shall thy strength be. A good amen there for your life. As your days, as you are getting older and older in strength, in vitality, in vision, in power, in ability. You'll be stronger and stronger and younger in Jesus' name. Look at verse 27. The eternal God is thy refuge. And underneath you, that's the word underneath you, at the everlasting arms underneath you the everlasting arms. And then he tells us, 
after he has told us, underneath us at the everlasting arms, it shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, destroy them. Look at verse 29. Happy art thou, brother, sister, son, daughter, happy art thou. Right now, today, happy art thou. Why? Because you are healed, because you are protected, because you are preserved, because the promises of God are yea and amen upon your life. Happy art thou, O Israel. What's your name? Put your name there. Happy art thou, O brother. O sister, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, who is the sword of thine excellency, and thine enemy shall be found liars unto thee. Make it personal. Your enemy shall be found liars unto thee. Say it, say it, make it personal. My enemy shall be found liars unto me. They say you will not succeed, they are liars. They say you will not get well, they are liars. They say you will constantly be oppressed, they are liars. They say you will die of hunger, they are liars. They say everybody is losing jobs, many people are losing jobs, it's coming to you, you are going to lose your job. Tell me they are liars because all your enemies will be found liars unto you. Then it says, Thou shalt tread upon their high places. The Lord is sinking you higher. You'll climb every mountain, you'll walk every rough road, and you will survive all this thing that is going on in the world right now. It is well with you. God has a covenant with you. And remember what he has said today. He has said, none of these diseases shall come upon you. None of these diseases shall come upon me. I'm saying it for you. None of these diseases shall come upon me. Because I am the Lord that he lets you. He'll keep you healthy. He'll keep you strong. He'll keep you protected. No evil will come upon your life in Jesus' name. And when the shutdown, lockdown, when the isolation is over, I will see you again. I'll see you happy. I'll see you healed. I'll see you delivered. I'll see you strong. I'll see you healthy. I'll see you prospered. I'll see you with the promises of God all fulfilled in your life because of the covenant God has with you. Let's pray together. Before we leave, uh, uh, rise up now. Anywhere you are, pay attention now and come to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, I thank you. Your covenant is with me. I thank you. Your covenant you will not break and you will not alter what has come out of your mouth. Better promises, better provision, better supply, better virtue, better blessings, better signs, and better wonders you are giving unto me, you are giving unto your child right now. What's the condition? Hacking? What's the condition? Listening? What's the condition? Accept? What's the condition? Believe? If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And then remember, the Lord is with you there. Is the constant companion as your healer, as your deliverer, as your savior, as your preserver, as the one that is all in all, God is with you. God is before you. And God is within you. And God is all around you. And God is above you. And God is guarding behind you. And underneath you are the everlasting arms. Praise the Lord. You are blessed. Praise the Lord. He answers your prayer. If there's any sickness, there, any infirmity there, remember, He'll take it away from the midst of you. Let's pray together. Father, 
in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the message you have sent to us. We thank you for the covenant we have with you and the covenant you have with us. I pray for every brother, every sister. I pray for everyone in the shade, in the shelter of their houses, anywhere they are now, in the little fellowship there and in the congregation there. Lord, I pray for everyone. I pray that the benefit of your, of your covenant will come upon everyone in Jesus' name. Name. Sickness, come out in Jesus' name. Disease, come out in Jesus' name. Any symptom of pandemic, any symptom of any epidemic, any symptom of any COVID-19, I command, be healed in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray that anything that is going around, walking about, like arrows, like attacks, like affliction, I break everything now. You said by, by the anointing, every yoke is broken. Every yoke in the lives of any of your people, I cancel everything right now. Lord, you said, you're not only our healer, you're our health. And the healing will be sustained. And the healing will be preserved. I pray for everyone. You keep everyone healthy. Everyone sound. Everyone strong. And I pray that this word will be tonic in every life, in everyone, in Jesus' name. And all the prayers your people have prayed, everything they have asked you, grant unto everyone right now in Jesus' name. We know that the believer will not lack. The believer will have every need supplied. And I pray every, for everyone now, make believers out of everyone in Jesus' name. And let your blessing be abundant. Let your blessing be overflowing. Let your blessing be more than sufficient for everyone right now. Confirm each in everyone, Lord. Do it and let there be something definite that everyone will say, I sense it, I know it, I feel it, I got it. Something has been done. Wonders and signs upon every life right now. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, Amen. I thank God for what he has given you and what he has done for you today. Remember, it's a covenant. And after we come from the marriage altar and we have made the covenant, we don't forget the covenant. The covenant continues every time. The grace of God continue with you. The power of God continue with you. The love of God continue with you. And the benefits of the covenant continue with you ever in Jesus' name.